Hello everyone, my name is Fox. Let's have a little story time. Back in March when I got the INEO, I started what was going to be my initial push into doing my full review on the INEO. However, while I was doing my gauntlet of TDP tests, that is to say, benchmarking across a variety of wattages, I had discovered that for a brief, shining moment, I had the best 5 watt scores in the world. And then I made one small change. I made that change in Windows Power Settings and never achieved those results ever again. So many tests of changing hundreds of power settings in all of the hidden power menu settings. I got nowhere. Until just a few days ago. Normally when we work with handheld gaming PCs, we are constantly struggling with balancing power distribution between the CPU and GPU. We always want the correct amount of power to go to the CPU and GPU. Sometimes the chip just does it automatically. Sometimes, often on Intel side, I mess around with CPU clocks to create an artificial ceiling on how high CPU clocks can go, thus creating a larger reserve of power for the GPU to do work. Quite often we are GPU starved on games, so we always want to make sure we have the most power to GPU when possible. The correct way to do this on Intel platforms is working with the Voodoo that is EPP modes, but I often just want to get right to the business, and then I just hard cap the CPU frequency. So isn't it interesting that the reason to extract the best performance out of AMD platforms while at low TDP is to statically set the GPU clock instead of the CPU? Before we begin, let me tell you my testing methodology. It's really quite simple, but here it is. The test platform is the IONEO running build 21H1 of Win10. I am using the default balanced power profile, and in AMD's control panel, I am using the standard preset. The primary tool used throughout the video is Renoir Mobile Tuning by SBSKI, specifically the latest test version that is capable of GPU clock overrides. Thank you very much to SBSKI for updating your tool so that people have a method of handling GPU clocks now. Before we begin, I'd just like to first state that manually controlling GPU clock frequency isn't a silver bullet. However, in the tests that I'm going to show, for the most part we get far better performance at extreme low wattages by underclocking the GPU. Many times when dealing with handheld gaming PCs, it can seem counterintuitive. When you say words like, to increase performance, you should undervolt. Sometimes that can sound like it would make performance worse. But remember, like I said in the beginning of this video, we always want the correct amount of power to go to the CPU and GPU. So in this instance, because we don't currently have access to voltage on Renoir, we can do the next best thing. Evaluate where the power budget is being spent, and if we notice that the power profile isn't acting correctly, we intervene. In this video, I have four benchmarks. Up first is the latest Final Fantasy XIV benchmark, the Endwalker benchmark. During this entire video where I've been explaining this whole process, you may have been looking at the frame rate between these two comparisons. The more important metric to actually take a look at instead of the frame rate, which is still important, is the TDP and total system power. If you go ahead and review all of this video that I've been showing you, both the TDP of the chip and total system power are pretty much identical. The only difference is, is that because I have purposely set the GPU clock to a specific frequency, we have managed to have a 28% increase in performance, despite the fact that both of these are running at 5 watt TDP. This next benchmark is Resident Evil 6, and honestly, this is where the whole Eureka moment came from, where I found out that there was a magic sauce setting for 5 watt. I don't know how I actually got it. Thankfully, with SPSKI's latest GPU override, we can actually just force it 100% of the time, so I'm glad that that's just an easy win now. The only deviation from this test that I've done is within the ba balance power preset that Windows has in their power configuration is in the PCIe power management setting. If you set it to off, at low TDP, you will tank your performance. It will get crushed. Actually set it to maximum power savings. This is 
not how typical Intel platforms work, which is how I actually discovered it because I automatically always set this to off by myself on other platforms. However, at low TDPs, you actually want that set to maximum power settings. The balanced power profile is typically really good out of the box. So there really isn't a bunch you need to do. However, I wanted to kind of highlight how extreme of a difference by setting this PCIe power management setting to off versus the GPU clock setting. Now, typically a score of 1500 to 1600 is what you would get on Resident Evil 6 when you set TDP to five watt. However, as can be seen here, we are still getting a performance boost by manually controlling the GPU clock. There's a few things again that I really want to drill home to you guys. On the left hand side is the worst power management setting for 5 watt TDP. And I'm sure quite a few of people have it actually set. If you have PCIe power management set to off, you will have terrible low watt performance. You really want that to be maximum power savings. And this particular benchmark will highlight it drastically between the two. Typically, the general balance profile setting will give you a score of 1500 to 1600 on this particular benchmark. If we manually set GPU clocks, in this instance, I set 375 megahertz for the GPU clock, you should still see a 15 to 18% performance boost as a general kind of rule. However, if you were to set this PCIe power management set to off, we have an alarming 62% performance increase. Both of these are at 5 watt, but there is a 62% performance difference. So just really kind of take that in that there can be a large discrepancy in performance by just a very simple setting in power control management. And we can take it even further by just manually controlling those GPU clocks. This particular benchmark is the Street Fighter 4 benchmark, and we're going back to the standard balance profile setting within Windows Power Profile. It is also labeled standard on the left-hand side. The thing about this particular benchmark that uh, is pretty cool, and I wanted to kind of have the IONEO Discord participate in this, I asked on the IONEO Discord if people could set their TDP on the IONEO to 5 watt and run this benchmark, just the default, just go ahead and uh, run it out. The thing about this is that the test results that those people reported back were 43 FPS average and 45 FPS average. I am managing 60 FPS average by the end of this result. So for those people, this is a 30% performance improvement for them, which is pretty huge. Uh, in my particular setting, I'm getting 50%, uh, 50 FPS average. So it's only a 20% performance boost uh, in my particular balanced profile power setting. But still, 30% and 20% still a large gain by just manually setting the GPU clock to 375 megahertz. And that is all of the magic that is happening here. Uh, literally just setting the GPU clock to 375 megahertz typically will hit the 5 watt TDP mark. Uh, so once again, underclocking the GPU is the winner for low TDP on the INEO and specifically the Renoir platform. The last benchmark for this particular video, uh, your favorite and mine, the good old heaven benchmark. This is a benchmark that I've been running since the GPD win one days. So way back in the long, long ago, I've been running this benchmark. So it's kind of a um, it's kind of tradition for me to run this thing. Uh, I will spoil it for you uh, by manually setting the GPU clock to 325 megahertz. Uh, we're still in the 5 watt TDP zone. Uh, it, we're getting a, basically a 40% uh, performance improvement, uh, average FPS. Uh, minimum FPS stays the same, maximum FPS goes up, but average FPS improvement of around 40%, still largely within the 5 watt TDP zone. The other thing to note when manually statically setting the GPU clock is that when you do it, the TDP kind of goes out the window. TDP will try to be respected, but it will respect the GPU clock first. 
So if you set the GPU clock to 500 megahertz, you're going to be spending, you know, nine watts of power. You're going to, uh, you will spend more than, you can't have 500 megahertz on the GPU clock and five watt TDP. The system won't allow it. It'll just bump up the TDP to nine watt. It's the basic, it's like, well, I can't do five watt. I'm going to do nine watts because you're demanding 500 megahertz on the GPU clock. So it's kind of interesting in that way. So you can kind of set a low barrier on TDP, but it will be disregarded if you set the GPU clock higher. So in effect, this is, in my particular view, one of the better ways to set TDP is not by using TDP, but by using GPU clock. And uh, that is a better metric, I feel, overall. And the system operates more how I anticipate it. So uh, for the most part, I am now very happy with it. Again, I don't think this is a silver bullet. This is not something that you should set and forget. By all means, please don't set and forget the GPU clock. That's not how this would work. Also, if you sleep the device and wake it up, it will reset the GPU clock, so you'll have to set it again. But the thing that I really want to point here is that setting the GPU clock is not going to be win 100% of the time. In, this, in these four particular instances, I have managed wins. Uh, and very large wins within basically the same TDP, right? We're spending the same power, but getting huge performance increases. So um, I would advise you to experiment with underclocking. Take a look at how much power is being spent. It's a lot of fun <laughs> just getting free performance out of this. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I had a lot of fun. I, I mean, mostly it's, it's just a feeling of relief because I know I got that score on Resident Evil 6 a long time ago back in March. And this has been a long time coming. Uh, work ramped up, and then I went on vacation, so I, I had to like kind of go away from a bunch of stuff. YouTube, my YouTube channel, I stopped making videos for a while, but I'm kind of back right now. So this is kind of uh, really my 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 zone, right? Is trying to find the best performance in, in specific stuff. So I'm glad that I have managed to get there. I wouldn't have gotten there without SP Ski's work. Uh, I could have used other tools that um, aren't very kosher, but uh, I could have got there, and I'm glad that it, this is a public tool that everyone can now partake in. Anywho, guys, as always, thanks for your time, and thanks for watching.